Well, praise the Lord. We are here despite the storms of life, the storms of weather. If you're able, will you stand and join us? Amen. You can stand the seated. Good morning, church. I failed last time to uh, recognize newcomers, and so I'd like to give this time a little opportunity for those that are new to welcome you to uh, NBC. Um, I'll be honest with you, uh, when my wife and I pulled into the parking lot, not knowing what to expect, um, Tom was just finishing up on his Tuesday Bible study, and uh, I entered in and just wanted to get a little feel for this place. And I'll be honest with you, we, we have been blessed for the time that we've been here. I appreciate uh, the teaching that comes out of this um, little fellowship here. You know, you'll get the word, and um, don't be shy to... Uh, let us know what we can do to help if you have any needs. So I am grateful and blessed that I'm a part of this uh, little fellowship, and God is good, isn't he? Okay, I, I have a, a reminder here. Actually, I got it written down. Um, I talked to Skip. I'm not as good looking as Skip, and I'm not as funny as he is. But... Uh, 
Today, uh, um, since we just completed the fifth Sunday for our offerings that go to uh, our missionaries, and this one is Oleg, um, we uh, brought in a total of $1,220, which is tremendous giving. And I'd like to thank everybody for participating. And, and if you could uh, be so kind, if you would like to add to that total, which would be wonderful, if you could make your check out and we can get it to Shirley right away, it could be added to and it would be a, a further blessing for, for what he's doing over there. So thank you very, very much for, for your contributions. Let's see, we got the bulletin board, so if you got your handout here that uh, Linda is so diligent in getting this to us. We have the adult Bible study that is at 9.30 on Sunday. Um, Bruce does a wonderful job. He's got a great topic here that he's covering is how not to read the Bible. I think he gave us a bit of an introduction last, last Sunday, which we appreciate. But I, I tell you, folks, there's nothing like spending time in the Word but you want to take full advantage of, of having an understanding. So not only do you not only read it and how it was delivered to others, but how you can go ahead and uh, allow it to change you. Because the Bible is one thing, you read it and it reads you. And it's nice to have that application and to grow. Because we all don't want to be just babies um, sucking milk. We want to eat the meat. And we want to be mature and we want to be... Well, let's face it, when you go out there, we might be the only Bible that the others ever see. They read us for what we say and what we do, how we respond to things. So I just encourage you, if you're not reading daily, that you really make a real effort to get up and spend some time, not only in prayer, but also reading his word. Okay, enough of that. So let's get to the announcements here. Uh, continuing, we got NBC Women's Breakfast will be Saturday, January 13th from 9 to 11 at Trail Riders. And Kim had to stay back at home to babysit a couple of dogs. Please pass that around so I can go home. I got today. it right here. So we're going to pass this around, let you all do the sign up. Here, let's see. We also have the uh, second Sunday potluck will be January 14th. So I know a lot of you folks out there look forward to that. So uh, please be prepared. And if you come in and for some reason you forget about it or whatever, you know, don't worry about it. We always have plenty of food to share for everybody. So you don't want to miss out on that. It looks like we got a men's breakfast that will be Saturday. January 20th, starting at 8 a.m. 8 a.m. at Trail Riders. So uh, usually guys are pretty doggone hungry, and so you, on the Trail Riders, the food's not that bad. So enjoy the fellowship. That's what it's all about. And then uh, NBC um, Tuesday Bible study has yet to be announced, but what it does, we'll let everybody know. And uh, Pastor Tom is. Uh, he just delivers such a great teaching on that, and I encourage you all to, uh, if you get an opportunity, to to join because it's it's just it's eye opening. Okay, let's get back to my notes here so I don't leave anything out. Um, <clears throat> Jackie is not with us today, but she did say when we get to the um, the prayer and praise time period. Please state your name so she can include who is making that particular request. Um, so I, I wanted to make sure I didn't forget all that stuff. So um, National uh, Day, we all look forward to that. Um, <laughs> it's kind of a strange one. Today is National Bobblehead Day. To be honest with you, I think it was named after our president, but that's just me. Um, <laughs> If I offended anybody out there, I apologize. But And also, it's National uh, Tempura Day. I think tempura is the 
flour concoction that you dip your sea shrimp, seafood, veggies, or whatever. So that takes care of that. And uh, also, I want to thank all of those who participated in the unloading of the new chairs, cleaning the place up, and adding the little <laughs> card holders, too. So we really appreciate everybody that was involved in that. Uh, also, it was a blessing because we took some of the other chairs and we were able to contribute those to another fellowship. So that's a real blessing. So again, thank you for all that participated. So moving on, I guess we can go to prayer. Unless there, is there anybody else that has a announcement that I missed? Okay, I guess we can go over to prayer and praise. Um, I got a few right here before I hand it over to, to Ron. Um, number one is Jackie's not here today, and I mentioned that uh, just ensure that you let her know that it's you that's giving the request out there. Jackie also asked that we have prayer for her husband, Dick, who's got to run down to the VA for um, a checkup, and he's not sick, but she just asked for a prayer covering for him, so... He doesn't pick something up because there's a lot of illness going on out there, as you well know. Um, let's see. Also, uh, Skip uh, said that Shirley had a very rough night last night. She was very sick. So um, please lift her up in your prayers that she would get through that illness quickly. And I wanted to add to that that Skip's going to be traveling um, to New Mexico to, um, to the doctors, and if we could just give him, uh, cover him with uh, traveling mercies, so he'll be well covered on that particular trip. Um, Iella, um, whose birthday is today, she's 29, I think. <laughs> well, maybe 39, I don't know. But. But anyway, um, she let me know that uh, she was uh, out shoveling snow and she kind of overdid it. And so she's not feeling up to par. She doesn't think that she picked up real sickness, but she couldn't make it today. So if we could lift her up in prayer that she'd be fully restored, that would be wonderful. So now I'm going to go ahead and open it up to other people's requests for prayer or praise and john's back there waving at me yeah i got a microphone probably tell me to get off the stage no no, no. Okay. i got a big mouth and a microphone <laughs> right. just uh want to thank everybody for their prayers for our sister-in-law phyllis who's really our sister uh, you know she's real close to us and she had open heart surgery this week uh, major stuff and the next day they had her up walking around she did a couple laps around the icu today this is the second day after the surgery She's uh, kicking butt and taking names, and we're so appreciative of that and of all the prayers that I know you guys gave her. John, do you want to mention the other requests that you had coming in? Yeah, we have an anonymous prayer request for a local family who lost a loved one. Um, I was asked not to use any names, and I won't, but God certainly knows who it is, and um, Jackie can add that to the prayer request, please. Okay, any other uh, praise or prayer requests from anybody? You know me too well. Uh, Pastor Jesse, pastor of the Baptist Church at Palo Verde, ha he and his wife both have COVID, and he was hospitalized yesterday. So I request prayer for Pastor Jesse. Thank you, Mary. Anyone else? Going once, twice. Okay, Ron, you want to go ahead and bring the microphone up to my dear friend Fred, and he'll give us the, the prayer. <laughs> it's on. If you would, everyone, join me in prayer. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your son Jesus who you sent to save us. He showed that 
even after a death he didn't deserve. You are God of all life, and you are the source of love and life, and that death cannot hold us when we put our faith in you. Father God, we thank you for travel mercies for those who are traveling this coming week, that you would get them to their destination safely and protect them as they travel. Father God, we thank you for the recovery from the flu, colds, COVID, other things that a number of us have recovered from. We know you can do great things. We pray for those who are currently suffering with those things, that you would heal them quickly, Lord, and return them to the fellowship to praise and worship you as we do today. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Oh, bless the Lord. If you're able, will you stand and join us as we sing about the friend we have in Jesus? Amen. Sings my soul, my 
that the highest king would welcome me. I was lost, but he brought me in, oh, his love for me, oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free, oh, his free indeed, I'm a child. has ransomed me his grace runs deep while I was a slave to sin Jesus died for me yes he died for me who the sun sets free oh his free indeed I'm a child seated at this time. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, yes, our Lord. He brings us hope and he brings us freedom. He takes away all those strongholds that hold us back, that hold us back. He breaks them. He breaks them no matter what they are. Praise the Lord. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. 
I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Cause your name is power Your name is healing Your name is life Break every stronghold Shine through the shadows Burn like a fire I just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety to every soul held captain by depression I speak Jesus your name is power your name is healing your name is life break every stronghold shine through the shadows burn like a fire shout Jesus from the mountains Jesus in the streets Jesus in the darkness over every enemy Jesus for my family I speak the holy name Jesus Shout Jesus from the mountains Jesus in the streets Jesus in the darkness over every enemy Jesus for my family I speak the holy name Jesus Your name is power Your name is healing Your name is life Break every strong through the shadows burn like a fire your name is power your name is healing your name is life break every stronghold shine through the shadows burn like a fire I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. Amen. Hello. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely. We definitely take complaints. Just go into my office. There's a complaint department thing on the on the wall there. Just press the button. That's how you submit a complaint. It'll come straight to me. I'll take care of it myself personally, okay? All right. See ya.
you know, really, I feel like I'm getting the hang of this job, man. I really am. I mean, I, got, I tell you, the people love me. Uh, I, I get thumbs up all the time, you know. Yeah, I think I'm going to be pretty good pastor. All right, can you hear me now? Jeez. All right, so time to get back to our prayer series, The Anatomy of a Great Prayer Life. This is part seven. We're going to look at how prayer applies to a very specific department within God's kingdom. Every successful organization has departments, right? Structure to handle different things. So we're going to take a look at God's complaint department today. You know, the Bible tells us over and over again not to complain, right? There's lots of scripture that you can go to. Uh, however, I believe there's, it's not that cut and dry, right? There's different ways to complain. There's different reasons to complain. Are we complaining to him or are we complaining to each other? You know, really, at the end of the day, it's like everything else. It's all what's in your heart, right? And God knows what's in your heart. You're not going to fool him. You're not going to pull the wool over his eyes. You're not going to slip a fastball past him. He knows exactly what's in your heart. So the questions are this. I mean, first, are, are you complaining to him or are you complaining to people? Are you complaining about him? You know, think about what the complaint is all about. Where is it coming from? Again, he knows what's in here. He knows what your motivation is. I think it's okay to go to him with your complaint. Job complained. Jonas complained. Lots of people complain, and I don't think there's anything wrong with going to God with your complaint, as long as your heart and your motivation is right. So number one in your outline today is your sound bite. We're getting to that early. God knows if you fail and care or fail to care. The big difference, because you're going to fail. It's part of the deal. But you see, if you really love him and you're really trying to live for him, it's going to hurt right inside here, right? He knows if you fail and care or fail to care. Again, he knows what's in your heart. So what does the scripture say about complaining in general terms? Let me give you three scriptures just to kind of set the table, okay? Peter said in 1 Peter 4, 9, offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Grumbling. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 10, 10, and do not grumble. He also said in Philippians 2, 14, do everything without grumbling or arguing. So the Greek word used for grumbling is gongismos. It means gossiping and complaining. Gossiping and complaining. We're to do everything without complaining. It's, it, to me, the scripture is very clear about that. But guess what? Sometimes we do. Sometimes we complain. I can stand here today and preach about not complaining. There's lots of scriptures we can go to. I can pound away at you. Uh, but I think we understand there's a difference in how you complain and who you complain to. My hope for today's sermon is that uh, to let you know, I think God understands sometimes we got to get it out. We got to get it out. Life can be hard. She needs to get it out. <laughs> See? Uh, and guess what? He gives us some instruction for how to do that. Um, being careful about how we complain, why we complain, who we complain to. You know, there's consequences, right? I mean, think about it. If you, if you let a complaining spirit build up inside of you, it could poison you. It really can. And if you're walking around complaining to everybody about everything, it's killing your testimony. So there are consequences. We've got to handle our complaints the right way. Check out what Paul taught us in Ephesians 4.29. He said, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, 
but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. The Greek for unwholesome here was sapros. It means bad, rotten, and decayed. So Paul's saying don't let any bad, rotten, or decayed talk come out of your mouth. See, I think we can all agree. You're walking around complaining about Pastor John, right? You're not building anybody up. You're not benefiting anybody. And that can be something that can fester inside of you. It can cause your heart to be bad, rotten, and decayed. And certainly your testimony can be too. Fortunately, we have a Heavenly Father who understands our weaknesses. He really does. He knows we're imperfect. He knows we're going to mess up. He knows that sometimes you got to get it out. you just got to get it out of you. Because of who he is and the fact that he loves us in a way that only he can, I'm not even a little bit surprised that he uh, gives us directions to his complaint department and instructions on how to use it. And here's the surprise. It's right here in the owner's manual. Can you believe that? I can't even believe that. All right, let's get to it. Somebody else got something they got to get out <laughs> Let's get to it. Long time ago, there was a dude named Asaph. All right. Now, oh, Asaph, he was a prominent Levite singer and seer in King David's court. Now, just so you, if you didn't know, the Levites were the tribe who kind of tended to the temple. Anything about the temple, they took care of it. This guy was a prominent member of that group or that tribe. There are 12 psalms that are attributed to Asaph or his descendants. Those are the 50th psalm and the Psalms from 72 to 82. You can tell because if you go to your Bible and you go to any one of those Psalms, it's introduced with a phrase that translates in English to of Asaph. So we know that either he or his descendants wrote those 12 Psalms. So we're going to take a look at one of them today, Psalm 77. Psalm 77. Uh, if you want to turn there, you can. We're going to have the scripture on the screen, and if you guys are at home, we'll have it on your screen too. He shows us God's complaint department, a way Asaph or one of his descendants does. He says, I cried out to God for help. I cried out to God to hear me. When I was in distress, I sought the Lord. At night, I stretched out untiring hands and would not be comforted. So the author of this psalm is struggling, right? He's in distress. That's what he said. And twice he cried out to God. He's having a hard time. He's struggling right now. And often that's when we begin our complaint, right? Things are bad. Things are tough, especially if it drags on a little bit. We start complaining. That's kind of where he's at right now. He needs to get it out. Sometimes we even complain when things aren't so bad, don't we? Anybody? I think so. And it can become a habit. Right? To where you're just complaining about stuff all the time. That's the way it works. We're human. We're imperfect. And if we let it fester and become a habit, that's what's going to happen. You know, often when I'm studying the Bible, especially for a sermon, um, it's helpful and even necessary to dig into the original Hebrew or Greek so we can really understand the intent of the writing. You know, the Holy Spirit in inspired all of the Bible through humans, okay? But different cultures and different times, sometimes we may see it differently, a, a term or a word differently than they did back then. That's absolutely the case with the word untiring. That caught my attention because it doesn't seem to fit with the rest of the text, you know. I, Psalmist said in verse 2, at night I stretched out untiring hands. To me that sounds like his hands aren't getting tired, doesn't it? But that's not what the the scripture actually means. The Hebrew word for untiring is puck. It means to grow numb, feeble, paralyzed, or stunned. Now, I don't know about y'all, but that's about the opposite of what I would have thought that word meant. So what we're going to do is, real quick, we're going to pause on our prayer thing because I'm going to stick something in there for you, all right? It's important to get into God's word. It's important to learn God's word. It's important to get to Sunday school. It's important to get to Bible study. It's important to get it open every single day and spend prayerful time in it. See, God did not intend for his word to be a dime novel. You pick it up, scan through it, stick it on the shelf, and that's it. It's unfortunately, we do that a lot with our Bible, and that's, that's really too bad. It's intended to be devoured. Every day, spend time in his word. Word. Get to the different things that are available to learn his word. 
Like I say, I, I say it all the time, 9.30 on Sunday, I'm not asking for a hard hat and a flashlight and a lunch pail and a shovel, you know, at 4 a.m. It's 9.30, man. Grab a cup of coffee, grab a donut, a cookie. Get in there and learn God's Word. It's a different way to learn it. It's so important that we dig into His Word. It's supposed to be a lifelong endeavor. He wants us to always be seeking Him. His whole life, our whole life. And, and the thing is, if it were easy, we wouldn't need to do it our whole life, right? It requires faith, and that you put that faith in motion by studying His Word every single day. All right, I'll stop beating you up on that for a minute. Um, the first two verses of Psalm 77. All right, so our guy's hurting. He's frustrated. He's just uh, distressed. Uh, but I think it's kind of cool or important that we note there in verse 2 that as he's going through that, he says he's not comforted. He's not comforted. So I, I, wanna, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to get in the boat with me for just a minute with our psalmist, with our guy. Let's try to feel his pain and feel his frustration actually try to feel it for a minute. He says, I cried out to God for help. I cried out to God to hear me. When I was in distress, I sought the Lord. At night, I stretched out numb, feeble, paralyzed, stunned hands, and I would not be comforted. Then he says in verse 3, I remembered you, God, and I groaned. I groaned. I meditated and my spirit grew faint. Now, here's a truth bomb for you. Every single human being is going to go through a hard time. If you're not in it today, you were yesterday, you will be tomorrow. That's just life, right? We talk about it all the time. We all have our own path we've got to walk, and there's dark spots on all of our paths, right? Our guy, our psalmist, was no exception. Can you hear the pain? Feel it in his writing? I really want you to get there, okay? There's a reason for it. I want you to think about the last time you felt that kind of pain. The last time you couldn't find comfort. We've all been there. No matter how hard you try, sometimes you just can't find comfort. If we can get in that boat, maybe we can identify with our guy here, right? You know, he had a lot on his plate. We have no idea what it was. He didn't tell us. And that tells me something, too. He wasn't complaining to us. He was complaining to him. Because God knows what the problem is, right? We've all heard the expression, uh, and I love this expression, God won't give you more than you can handle. Isn't that a nice one? Anybody ever heard that? Anybody? God won't give you more than you can handle. That's a pretty statement, isn't it? But it ain't true. It ain't true. Don't you believe that? Number two in your outline, God will absolutely allow you to have more than you can handle. So you will learn to trust in and rely on him. You can bank on it. Sometimes when you're right there in the middle of it, right smack dab in the middle of dealing with whatever it is that's more than you can handle, right? When you're in the middle of it, you got to get it out. Because we're people, we're humans, right? So let's, let's talk about how, and it's number three in your outline, how to submit a complaint to God. There's no form. There's no fancy button on the wall, okay? But there is a way. 3A, know that you will have times of despair in your life and need him. You're going to have times, you're going you're gonna to be in a tough spot, and you're going to need God. Our psalmist, our guy, he knew he needed God. He knew he couldn't deal with whatever that was that was going on in his life without God. That God was the one who could actually intervene on his behalf. We need to know that too. We need to know that he is God of the universe. Nothing is beyond his control. That's really important. In verse 3, the psalmist said, I remembered you, God. 3B in your outline, remember who he is. The all-powerful God of the universe. Hear this right now, okay? If it's happening to you, he allowed it. If it's happening to you, he can control it. There's no willy-nilly. You ain't going to pull anything on God. You're not going to throw a fastball by him. He's not going to swing and miss on a curveball. 
If it's happening to you, he allowed it, and he can control it. Still in verse 3, our psalmist says, I remembered you, God, and I groaned. I meditated, and my spirit grew faint. Then in verse 4, you kept my eyes from closing. I was too troubled to speak, so our guy here, you don't even know what to say. We talked about that a few weeks back as one of the obstacles to a great prayer life, being speechless, right? This guy was speechless. He, he said, I groaned and I had trouble speaking. He didn't even know what to say. 3C in your outline. Know that sometimes your prayers won't be pretty. And that's okay with God as long as your heart's right. He's not looking for Hemingway, right? He's looking for your heart. That's what he wants. As our psalmist here continues in this prayer, continues to submit his complaint to God, um, things are starting to turn a little bit. I don't know if you see this or not. Beginning of Psalm 77 is all about this dude being in distress. Then he remembers God. He's struggling to verbalize his complaint. But now we start to see God working on him. Because in verse 4 he says, You kept my eyes from closing. God... You kept my eyes from closing. So I'm betting just about everybody in this room has had sleepless nights at some point. And you know, I think it was really weird. After I got to church this morning, two different people said they had a problem sleeping last night. I thought that was amazing because we're going to talk a little bit about that right now. You know, I, I'll be honest with you. I could lay down here right now and go sleep. I'm one of those people. I could right now, right in front of you. If you want me to shut up, I'll do that. <laughs> You know, see, I don't believe that every time we can't sleep, I don't think it's always an accident. I mean, sometimes we do it to ourselves. I think sometimes the enemy beats up on us, but sometimes God allows it. Why don't you think about it for a minute? That time in the middle of the night, it's one o'clock in the morning. You're laying there. You're sleepy. You're tired. You've got a full day tomorrow. You've got all kinds of stuff to do. And you're thinking, boy, I'll tell you what, some sleep would sure be helpful. And you know, the older you get, the more you need to sleep, you know? But sometimes you're laying there at 1 o'clock in the morning and you just can't get there. You cannot fall asleep. Think about it. It's a little bit, that time is a little bit different than any other time of the day, is it not? It's kind of quiet, you know. Uh, maybe you got a dog in the corner snoring or got a fan running, whatever that white noise is that's in your house, right? But you're laying there and, and you, it, there's a different feeling and a different mindset at 1 o'clock in the morning when you can't sleep than any other time of day. And I believe God will allow that to happen sometimes. Why would he do that? Well, let's look at Psalm 119, 147, 48. It says, I rise before dawn and cry for help. So this psalmist was awake in the middle of the night crying out to God too. He says, I have put my hope in your word. My eyes stay open through the watches of the night that I may meditate on your Promises. You want to know why God would allow sleeplessness? Number 3D in your outline. Know that God wants you to put hope in his word and to meditate on his promises. And guess what? If you ain't doing it during the day, he may just keep you up at night. Don't think for one minute he can't or won't. He will. See, that's what the, our guy here, right? The psalmist. That's what happened to him. He said that God kept his eyes from closing. God allows sleeplessness. So what happened next? Verses 5 and 6. I thought about the former days, the years of long ago. I remembered my songs in the night. My heart meditated. So, you know, here we are, 1 o'clock in the morning or whatever, and our psalmist is laying there awake and he can't sleep. And what happens? Well, at first he's crying out to God, can't get any comfort, doesn't know what to say. He's groaning, and now he's sitting there, he remembered God, and he's thinking about all the cool stuff that's happened in his life. His songs, and he was a prominent singer. He's remembering the good stuff in his life. See, I don't think there's an accident here that, uh, you know, he began remembering the good stuff in his life in verses 5 and 6 right after he remembered God in verse 3. That's not an accident. It's not a mistake. The Bible don't have any willy-nilly. God did that. God did that. 3E in your outline. Remember all the good stuff God has done in your life. It can be hard. When life's tough, when you're struggling with something, it can be hard to remember the good stuff. We talked a couple weeks ago about 
how it's so easy for us to focus on what we don't have, right? Because if you're looking at what you don't have, you can't see anything past that. You can't see what you do have. It's really easy to focus on the problem you're in, the circumstance you're in, and not see all the stuff God's done for you in your life. You've got to remember that. Remembering the good stuff, remembering God is good medicine. It's good medicine. So going back to verse 6, our psalmist continues his prayer. He says, my heart meditated and my spirit asked, will the Lord reject forever? Will he never show his face again? Has his unfailing love vanished forever? Has his promise failed for all time? Has God gotten, forgotten to be merciful? Has he in anger withheld his compassion? See, even though he's distressed, even though he's hurting, even though he's sleepless, he's meditating on God, and I think what he's doing here is he's seeing that deep down inside, God's not going to leave me. He's not going to turn his back on me. He remembered that. He remembered God, and then he remembered who God was. You know, the enemy wants you to think God's going to turn his back on you. That's one of his favorite lies. Think about it. If he can get you to think that God doesn't love you, that God doesn't care about you, that God's looking the other way, that God's not paying attention, that God's not in your life and doesn't want to be in your life, he wins. He wins. Game over. Game set and match. But this dude, see, he's starting to see deep down inside, I know God's not going to turn his back on me. I know God's not going to stop loving me. I know God's not going to stop showing mercy and combat, compassion to me. I know that. But sometimes when stuff's hard, when we're weary, when we're distressed like this guy was, we can forget God's promises, can't we? We can forget it. Like the promise he gave us in Isaiah 41.10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That's a great promise, but we forget it when things are tough, don't we? Sure. Or the promise he made in Deuteronomy 31, 6. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He didn't say, I won't leave or forsake you on Wednesdays, right? If you're good, I won't leave you and forsake you. I will never leave you or forsake you. That's a promise. Or maybe the promise Jesus gave us in Matthew 28, 20, when he said, surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. I don't know about you guys, but I got to say, man, I th <laughs> knowing Jesus is with me from now on, doesn't matter how long the world goes, he's with me. That's, that's pretty awesome. So 3F in your outline, know that God will never forsake you. I've said it before, if there's a gap between you and God, if there's a problem with your relationship with God, look in the mirror, because he hasn't moved. He's right where he's always been. So what happens next with our guy? Let's pick it back up in verse 10. He said, then I thought to this I will appeal. Appeal, the Hebrew word here was hala. It means to seek or ask for. So he's saying to this I will seek or ask for the years when the Most High stretched out his right hand. See, now the dude's not just crying out. You catch that? We, we, we're going through the scripture, through the psalm. He starts out twice, right at the beginning. I cried out to God. He didn't even know what to say. He couldn't be comforted. Now what's he doing? He's actually asking God to help him. I'm going to ask you. I'm going to implore. Please stretch out your mighty hand for me. So 3G in your outline. Ask for God to do a God thing in your circumstance. Ask for God to do a God thing in your circumstance. I'm going to tell you this. If you're relying on yourself to solve everything in your life, then what you're doing is you're doing man things. And I hate to break the news to you, but God things are better than man things. Take it to the bank, okay? Remember what Pastor John told you that. Continuing in verse 11, I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will consider all your works and meditate on all your mighty deeds. So at this point in Psalm 77, the guy's gone from despair 
to remembering everything God, God has done for his life, realizing God's never going to leave him, forsake him. And now we're starting to see some results here, right? He's now remembering what God can do, what God has done. He's remembering the power that God has shown over and over and over again. He's remembering all the God things that he's seen in his life. That's quite a, don't you think there's a big difference between where he started and where he's at right now? He continues in verse 13, he says, your ways, God, are holy. What God is as great as our God? You are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the people. With your mighty arm, you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. Now check this out right here. He says, the waters saw you, God. The waters saw you and ride. Very depths were convulsed. Man, if that ain't some power. He said, the clouds poured down water. The heavens resounded with thunder. Your arrows flashed back and forth. Your thunder was heard in the whirlwind. Your lightning lit up the world. The earth trembled and quaked. Three H in your outline. Remember how powerful he really is. Remember how powerful he really is. I had a question for you. You've got to be honest with yourself. Because Pastor John can't help you with this, all right? What kind of God do you serve? I want you to think about it. What kind of God do you serve? Is it your job? Is it a bottle? Bad relationships? You know, what kind of God do you serve? Because I hate to brag, but I'm going to. See, my God, he's greater than any other God. My God's greater than any other God. You know, mankind's been making gods out of all kinds of weird stuff, you know, from the beginning. None of them are still here. None of them love me. None of them are alive. My God is alive right here and right now. He's greater than any other God. Guess what? My God, he made the waters writhe and convulse. Is that cool? Man, that's cool. My God's thunder and lightning lit up the world, made the earth tremble and shake. That's who my God is. I don't know about you all, but that's my God. And guess what? It's the same God that this psalmist served. See, not a God, G-O-D, but the God, capital G-O-D. It's a big difference. Sometimes we just lose sight of exactly who he is. It happens in all of our lives. We just kind of forget, right? And check this out now. If you don't hear anything else today, hear this. Maybe you need a little despair to get you back there. You ever think about that? Maybe you need some sleep depravity to give you a chance to remember just exactly who he really is is maybe just maybe going out on a limb here maybe he'll let your tank run completely empty so you can remember who he is you can learn to rely on him rest on, in him count on his strength all right so next up is the payoff okay the payoff it's coming up here this guy just went through this process you know of, of submitting a complaint to god's complaint department okay he was taken from the lowest low of despair, not knowing what to say, couldn't find comfort, couldn't sleep. Then he remembered God, not just crying out to him, but remembered him, remembered what God had done. He remembered that God was never going to turn his back on him. He remembered who God really was and how powerful he really is. So finally, he began asking God to do a God thing in his circumstances. Let's get to the payoff. Let's see what happens in verses 19 and 20. He says, your path led through the sea, your way through the mighty waters, though your footprints were not seen. I just think that's so cool right there. Think about that for just a minute. My, see, my God, I, I don't know about your God, but my God can fix it all and not leave a footprint or a trace behind. That's some power right there, man. That's some power. He finishes up, you led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses 
and Aaron. So three I in your outline. Let God lead you through everything, good and bad, in your life. Everything. Have him involved every minute, every step of your life. That's the only way you can feel him there with you as this stuff happens in your life. It's like I always say, you know, we make decisions based on what we know, which ain't much. God makes decisions based on what he knows, which is everything. Big difference. You know, guys, I'll tell you, I don't know if you guys have noticed this. Dave probably hasn't, but maybe somebody else can get with me on this. I don't know. This world's a jungle. This, this world's a Do you see what people are doing to each other out there? My goodness, this world is a jungle. I don't know, but you guys, I want the best guide I can have to get through this thing. You know, I want the, a GPS for my life that'll get me home. What is home? It's where God wants me to be, wherever he wants me to be. How do we get there? Prayer. You've got to spend time with him. You've got to spend time with him. Get in his word. Pray. What's the scripture say? First Thessalonians, pray what? Oh, come on, man. I'm going to say three, and I want to hear it, okay? You ready? Nice and loud. You ready? One, two, three. Whoa. Here we go continuously we need a strong constant relationship with god we need to feel him there with us every step of the way because guess what stuff's going to happen you're going to have stuff in your life man even when you're complaining even when you're distressed even when you're weary even when you're lost you want god there with you at all times number four in your outline sometimes god allows things like pain Despair, sleeplessness in our lives to help us remember who he is. Why? Because he wants to be the center of our lives. He wants to be the center of our lives. I just love what God said in Jeremiah 33, 3. It's one of my favorite verses in the Bible. He says, call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. Would you... Dwell on that for just, that's just one little sentence. But there's a lot of stuff packed in there, man. This is the God of the universe, right? The one who makes the water convulse, okay? He says, if you'll call me, I will hear you, and I will answer you. And then what? I'm going to tell you great things, man, that you don't know. But what really blows my mind is when he says, I'm going to tell you unsearchable things you don't know. Think about that for just a minute. Do you think our psalmist needed some answers from God? Do you think maybe he needed God to tell him things that he didn't even know he needed to look for? It's unsearchable, is it not? Did the psalmist need, uh, you know, to know things that he didn't know he even needed to know? Yeah, I'm redneck. I need to know things I don't even know I need to know, and I still need to know, right? We all need that. When we're desperate, when we're scared, when we're stressed out, when we get to the point we just don't know what to do, and it happens to all of us, i got some great news for you. He does. He knows what to do. Amen? Father, we just thank you today for your house and your word and the promises we get in it. That we have a God that's great enough that we can come to you in prayer, that you would hear us. It just blows my mind. That's what Brother Dave and, and, uh, and Brother Dan said in our prayer up here today. That we have a God that will actually let us come to him and he'll listen to us and he'll answer us. It's just as mind-numbing. It really is. We thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for all the instruction we find in your word. Lord, I pray as we go out this week that each of us will understand the importance of a prayer life, a great prayer life, a constant connection with you, Lord having you involved every step of every single day so we can feel you right there with us because we know you really are. So, Lord, as we go out this week, I pray that each of us will remember that and work on that, get into your word, spend time with it, and share you with everybody we come in contact with today. We pray all that in the name of Jesus. Amen. So today's first Sunday of the month. We have the blessing, the honor to celebrate communion. Pastor Tom's going to do that for us. You guys have a great week. Stick around. We're going to have a song after communion. Don't leave.
be looking for a job. You know, Pastor John is very right. He's correct when he says that there should be fun in worship, correct? But also there are times like Moses when we are on the mountain and we're in the presence of God in a different way and we kick off the sandals from our feet and we recognize that we are on holy ground, serious ground, sacred ground. That's what we're right now. This is not just something we tack on to the end of worship once a month. This is a very special moment when we remember. 1,300 years or thereabout before the night that Jesus was betrayed, God had freed Israel from the bondage of Egypt. Moses didn't do it. The people didn't kick off their shackles. God did it. And he did it through ten plagues, but the last one really got Pharaoh's attention. If there was not blood over your doorpost and lentils, when the angel of death came by, the firstborn were taken. But if the blood was there, you were spared. On that night when Jesus went to the cross, he broke a tradition. They remembered, they remembered, they remembered. And once a year, the high priest would take and offer a sacrifice for the people that would last a year. But on that night, when the Son of God, when God himself was offered on a cross, a different type of freedom took place. We had the opportunity to be freed from bondage bondage and chains of sin and death. We had the opportunity to start life brand new, just like the children of Israel did. And Jesus said, and the Apostle Paul also confirmed it, don't ever forget, remember me. That's what we're going to do right now. If you are a child of God, then this is a moment of celebration. And I ask that as you take the cup and you take the bread, that you remember the greatest moment of love, the greatest offering that has ever been made for a human being, and it was made by God for you because he loves us more than we could ever imagine. I'm going to go ahead and, while Peg's playing, we'll have the elements passed. Hold them, if you will. And if you are a believer, take a cup. I don't care what denomination you're with. If you are a child of God, take that cup and hold it. We have open communion here. I'm going to ask Dave and I'd ask Bruce to come up. And they will pass the cup and they will pass the bread to you. Hold it and we will take it together. Will you please pass it? Use this as a time to connect with God. He said, don't take this in an unworthy manner. Make it mean something. Let it be a holy moment between you and God to say thank you for all that he has done, especially in this great moment.
You ever wonder whether God loves you or not? Look at that cross. How much does he love you? That much. His body was on that cross, not because he deserved to be there, but because you deserve to be there, and I deserve to be there. He took the punishment I deserved. Again, not because he deserved it, but because he loved me, and he wanted to spare me of that and become one with me and become one with you. Father, as we take the bread, help us to remember the great sacrifice, the great act of love that you did for us, that not only may our past sins be forgiven, but that we might have the ability to not only have a new life, but to live a new life, not in our strength, but in yours. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Take the bread. What can wash away my sins? What can wash away your sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. When you stand before him and I stand before him one day, he won't be looking to see how much you put in the collection plate, how many times you came up to the church. He will be looking at one thing, just as he did on that night of Passover. Are you covered by the blood? by the blood of the Savior. Father, as we take this, thank you so much. My salvation does not depend on me, but salvation comes through you alone and through the sacrifice and through the blood that covers us now. Father, as we take this, may we never forget and always remember your great love and what that means to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Take the cup, please. Do you have a mighty Savior? And do you have a great salvation? Go in God's grace, go in his peace, and as John said, stand, sing the song, because we don't want John to get fired, right? Wandering into the night Finding a place to hide this weary soul Bag of bones. I tried with all of my might, but I just can't win the fight. I've slowly drifted a vagabond. And just when I ran on the road, I met a man I didn't know, and he told me. choice but to relieve my doubts of burning like ashes in the wind so so long to my old friends burden and bitterness you can't got to keep it moving nah you ain't welcome here from now to my walk streets of gold I'll sing of how you save my soul this wayward son has found his way back home you pick me up you turn me around you place my feet on solid ground i thank the master i thank the savior because you healed my heart you changed my name forever free i'm not the same i thank 
the master, I thank the savior, I thank God. Hell lost and by the one, I am free, I am free, I am free. Hell lost and by the one, I am free, I am free, I am free. Hell lost and by the one, I am free. I am free, I am free. Hell lost and by the one, I am free, I am free. Yeah. I thank the Savior because you healed my heart. You changed my name forever free. I'm not the same. I thank the Master. I thank the Savior. I thank God. I thank God. God bless you. Have a blessed week.